I have a gigantic sleeve. So, yes, beer! <laughs> it's so much puff and so much ruffle and it's everything that I could have ever asked for in a cosplay. G'day and welcome back to Kiralee Cosplay, the channel where we talk about all things cosplay, costuming and sewing related. And yes, I am in my pajamas and you know exactly what that means if you are a subscriber to this channel. If you're not, that's cool, that's fine, you know, maybe consider it, but you know, if you are a subscriber, you know what this means. It's cosplay making time! Is there other things I'm meant to be doing at the moment? Absolutely! But as a true adult, I'm just not. So the cosplay that I have chosen will be my next endeavour. And I don't really have a set kind of deadline for it, slash convention or competition that I'm entering it into. Nothing like that. This is just because I felt so inspired when I saw the image that I was like, mm hmm, I need to make that. It, need, it needs to come into my life and be on my body. Um, and it is a design by the amazing Sunset Dragon. Now, if you don't know who Sunset Dragon is, Oh, you need to check out her work. I am a patron of her on Patreon and I love it so much. Like having access to all of her pictures early and then like special exclusives. Oh, I love it. And that is exactly what happened this time. So she released a Red Riding Hood image, uh, her own design on her and her own take on the costume and I love it. I saw it, I fell absolutely absolutely head over heels in love with it. I I saw the previews and I was like, oh, I really like that design. And then she did the final image and she just mm, elevated it. It was amazing. And I was just like, well, everything else is out the window. I'm making that. Now looking at the reference image, I know that I do need to make a mock-up of the shirt and the bodice and maybe a little bit on the skirt as well, but I don't feel like making a mock-up today. It's just, it's just not the day to make mock-ups. So I am going to do the responsible thing and make the crinoline, but I'm going to make it because it's a very short one. I'm going to probably make it just as like all material with the bone, with the hoops inside of it, the bones. Oh my gosh, Kira Lee, where is your brain? Um, and I am also going to do, I'm going to do like the ruffles to like have a petticoat kind of built in within that. So it's all one unit. It's very, very short because the front side of the skirt is lifted up. So I want to keep it short, but I do need the volume. So I'm going to make that today. I've got some red cotton that I found in my stash and we're just going to bust that out. Woohoo! Let's ignore adult responsibilities and make a cosplay! <laughs> so I've managed to do this. <laughs> hey! It looks like so much. So what it is, is it's kind of like a crinoline? I guess it's a crinoline. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's like, it's going to be like a hoop skirt, okay? So what it is, is that I've just decided to do a very, very short one. It really is going to be short. Just to kind of help with the structure. Kind of like, you know, the the pantiers kind of situation with Jigglypuff. You know, the, the Rococo-ness. But this is a round circle. Anyway, it works in my head. Hopefully it will work in, like, translation. And I'm trying to make it all nice, but... Realistically, no one is going to see this, and if they do see it, they're very close to me, and they should probably buy me dinner first. But, here we have it. So, here's the top. This will be all gathered down and attached to elastic at the top. And then I've got two boning channels, one which was just the hem that was put up, and then, then I've also done this other boning channel here out of the same fabric. So, those are all prepped, ready to go. I have an opening in the back, which is great. So, before I put the boning in, though, because I don't hate life, I'm going to do the ruffles. So normally you would have like a crinoline and then like a petticoat on top to kind of smooth it all out. I'm just going, you know what, let's just chuck it all together on this one. So what I've got here is I've got all these strips of fabric of four and a half inches that I just need to sew together and then I also need to um, do a rolled hem. All of this seems to be rolled hem. Yeah. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll gather it down and attach it to this. One that will go here so it will hang over the bottom and then one that will go here so that it hangs over this one. So it's going to look like a ruffle goodness skirt 
once it's done. That is the theory behind it. Uh, so yes, it is time to start ruffling, or at least prepping for the ruffling. I'll probably show you the ruffling because the prepping is boring. All right, see you then. Da -da, look, it's a ruffly skirt. So I still need to put the hoops in. Uh, I need to cut the hoops and I don't know if I currently feel like I have the strength to do that. It has been a day, but like, mm -hmm, it's so roughly, it's so gathered. So I'm really happy with how this is looking. So yes, next will be the hoops and then this part will be done and then I can start with the mole cubs. And look, it's a Lacey. Say hi, Lacey. Yeah, who's a good girl? Oh, you are. Are you a good girl? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. oh my, what have I created? Um, all right then. <laughs> Look, it is honestly so much fun just making something and not really 100% know how it's exactly going to turn out and just exploring and having fun. So look, this is looking actually pretty good. This is like the extreme version. So it has the two channels of bonings like in here, which are still open at the back. So I can reduce the circumference down to make it less pancake tutu looking uh, and more like crinoline based. But uh, I want to do the mock-up of the skirt and the bodice and everything and kind of see where it needs to properly hang. But uh, look, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> Here is the first mock-up of the bodice. Now, as you can see, it's definitely nowhere like near where it should be. This is just a um, standard pattern, a commercial pattern that I've pulled out and I have made and then I've taken in where it needs to be taken in to kind of fit my body. I've got it inside out so that way I've got, I'm working with the seams, it's a bit easier that way. Um, so I will now, because it's now kind of fitting my body the way that I want it to fit, knowing that with the boning that needs to be added, it will fit correctly. <laughs> boning is important in bodices, guys, like, mm, tip. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw in the lines of the main bodice, and then what I will do is then basically pull it all apart, figure out where the new seam lines need to be. So, for example, this seam line will come up and connect here to the neckline when it comes down um and yeah the back i'm not really touching because i've only got the front uh reference image and the back feels really comfortable and very good so i'm just going to leave it the way that it is uh it's a bit of a higher back like it's coming up there so it means that it feels really really comfortable to wear so that that's really good um i don't think i'll do it any higher than than that um because I think then you would start seeing it coming up on my neck. So I think it's a good placement for that. I was also thinking about lengthening this, but I think based on the reference image, if I actually turn that up one and a half centimeters, which is the seam allowance, it actually sits right on my waist, which is where the bodice should finish and the pillows come out of. So I'm actually quite happy with the look of the base of this. Uh, the point and everything is like really what is happening in the reference image. So yes, let me put down the camera and I will draw all over myself as be to the best of my ability because, you know, Terry has just left for the gym, so it's all on me. Uh, and then I will come back, show you, and then we'll cut it all apart and make a second mock-up. And welcome back to the hot mess that is creating mock-ups. So this is what I've got. Look at, like, mm, trying to draw on yourself is not fun. But basically what I've got here is the new line of the bodice and I'm going to take it off and have a bit of play with it and kind of make them a little bit more curved and a bit more straight where they need to be. But basically it needs to come down to about here as the finish line, go across and then up. So more of a straight look than what we've got at the moment. And then this seam line needs to change so that it goes down here. Then I've got the middle middle panel. So keep in mind that this is here and here. So it's actually like this wide. So it's quite a decent chunk. And then I've got the same happening on the side here. So it looks small, um, especially like, you know, looking like here. 
but it is going to be the right size I think I'll double check when I take it off um, because it will look bigger because it's got the laces going across so my next job is to take this all off and to just draw it all out make sure that I'm happy with where everything is placed and then do a second mock-up and hopefully it all works so let's do that and also if you're wondering about why I've kept these quite loose like they're quite loose over here is because there is sleeves and when you turn them in that's about the width of the top and then you've got the sleeves coming off there so it's sitting quite nicely on the shoulders um, and that's the main part so yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I may play around with it, with it once I get to figuring out the sleeves. So, yes, let's just figure out the bodice first and then I'll worry about the shoulders and the sleeves later. Uh, the other thing that I realised is that the kind of hip pillows that she's got, I was going to initially attach them to the skirt, but having a look and seeing how this bodice fits and where the pillows sit on her, I think I'm actually going to attach the pillows to the bodice themselves. Um, because I think if the skirt is able to flow quite freely, then it will sit nicer. So that will also need to be figured out as well. Mock up ma'am! Woohoo! <laughs> Alright, let's go and make the second mock up of this bodice. And welcome to the second mock up. So this is what it is currently looking like and I am very happy with how it's looking. So what I have done is there is the main bodice underneath here which goes up here and I had got I have cut away the seam allowance and then I realized I might actually keep the seam allowance off this section up here and also I don't think that I am going to like pull up the shoulders so this means that this rose up and I'm actually liking where this is finishing so what I'm thinking I'm going to do instead is do that old-fashioned trick uh, or rather the old way that they used to construct like bodices and actually do like no seam allowance up here just connect the top panel to the lining panel with the bones in the middle and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the bias binding around here and down the bottom as it shows in the picture anyway so that way it will be less bulk at this area here and here which is awesome and i get to use a historical technique woohoo uh what i've also done it's very hard to see because they're both calico but i have got this little vanity panel here as well and that is because on top of here to about here is a whole lot of ruffles like very very tight ruffles that will run across so what I'm going to do is I wanted to have a backing to that so that way the kind of indented version of the the ruffle or the pleat um, will be something that I can catch onto here so that way they stay up straight so I will probably end up doing like light interfacing anyway with those uh, but yeah just give them a little bit of extra um, strength but yes so what I'm also loving is that because of where the lines are on the bodice, it's pretty straight. So putting boning in here is going to be re reasonably easy, which is fabulous. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's what it looks like. Very happy with it. Um, and yeah, good times. I just need to now draw in this area so that I know what the shape is and then figure out what seam allowance I need and all of that so that's going to be the next job uh, and take up the uh, take up the shoulder seams slightly because I've taken them up with pins about or oh, about a centimeter and a half I think so yeah and it's not actually doing too much for the armholes which is nice uh, and these will have this has got seam allowance anyway because it's got the the, the big puffy sleeves which is what I will need to work on next. So before I begin sewing again I wanted to show you this is a normal straight sleeve. This is the mock-up <laughs> of the puff sleeve. <laughs> look, look at the size difference. <laughs> Alright, let's see how this works together. 
Oh yeah, and I'm gonna be using this one as the inner support layer for that one because there is no way that you could just have a puff sleeve of this size floating. I have a gigantic sleeve. <laughs> I adore it so much. It's maybe a little bit too big, but I don't care. I actually think it really brings a beautiful kind of fairy tale vibe to this. And when I've got the kind of pleats slash ruffles up here and I've got the big pillows on the hips, I think it's going to balance it out. But I do need to add a frill, but I'm not going to do it in the mock out because the like little ruffle frill on the base is... A Super easy. That's just going to be a rectangle that is ruffled down. Not a problem at all. And that will be sewn there. It's got good movability, which makes me happy. Uh, I do need to take in the back um, because once the sleeves goes on, goes on, there's actually a fair amount of weight that is associated with it. Funny that, which makes the straps kind of fall off a bit off my shoulders. So I am going to have to take in the back at the top a little bit just to kind of give it this kind of look. So, okay, not bad for a day's work. Uh, I am loving how this is looking. Uh, and tomorrow, or whenever I work on this next, it will be certainly a case where I'll work on the pillows and also figure out the skirt, whether it's going to be a half or a three quarters circle skirt. More mock-up mayhem continues. So here we have the bodice with the puffy sleeve as I've shown you in the previous one and now I have the side pillow. Uh, this was the first mock-up and to be honest I'm pretty happy with it. Like the, this is a half circle skirt base pattern um, that I then kind of drew a rough shape that I thought it would be and I think like in terms of the reference image and then also like just how it's looking in proportion to the sleeve and everything I think this is pretty good. So obviously it's got the ruffle that will be going from like here all the way around and that that width will be the same width as this these two seams so I'll figure that out write it all down and then it's got the embroidery here so I'll mark out when this is on the dress form because you know drawing yourself on yourself is not fun um where that embroidery will roughly be and yeah so that's pretty good so a few things that I need to do now I do need to take out the top layer of um the boning in this um and I'm gonna have a look at it without the top layer of boning. It would suck because I spent so much time putting that in, but I may actually replace it with a smaller hoop kind of situation because it is giving a really nice shelf for here, but it's just too much of a shelf. It needs to kind of collapse down a little bit. And yeah, I think that even if this was like, like that on this side, just all the way around, that would still look really really quite good so I think I'm going to do that next and then I will start working on the skirt so what I did was I tried to do a half circle skirt just to see how that would fit and as you can see it's just not working at all there's just not enough fabric for the half circle skirt it doesn't even do up at the back um, so I'd either have to collapse the the crinoline more uh, which I don't particularly want to do um, I mean, I probably will have to anyway, but I'd have to collapse it quite significantly to get it to work and it doesn't gather right or anything at the front. So looks like I'm going to have to change plans and try and do the three quarter circle skirt, which is not fun because it means that there will be a kind of random panel which I'll probably end up putting in the back, which will be hidden by the cape. But because of how the costume is shaped, you're still going to see it. So not thrilled about that, but this just doesn't have enough fabric. And I can't do a full circle skirt because that is just not going to work. I think what I might actually do is try and do a three quarter skirt and then figure out where I can cut it so that it's maybe the seams will be on the sides rather than randomly in the back. This is where we're up to. So this is the uh, three quarter circle skirt um, and I'm much happier with how this is looking. 
uh, very roughly gathered here and yeah <laughs> it's it's got enough volume the skirt goes around the entire crinlan very easily but already i can tell that i will need to cut the skirt actually a little bit shorter in the front and make it longer in the back because already this is pretty much giving me the right amount of volume in fact there might be a little bit too much volume in the front here as per the reference image and it's going down as far as it should be going down um, but when we look at the back it's nowhere near where it's meant to be so I have a feeling what I'll need to do is cut out the fabric that I need as full and then play around with what length I want it to be when I actually have the real fabric because depending on how the fabric drapes will depend on how much I cut off if that makes sense but yeah this is what it currently looks like uh, calico is a little bit heavy <laughs> but yeah I might even play around with cutting off a little bit at the front I actually don't mind that there is a double seam in the back so I might just keep that to be honest um, rather than fiddling around and trying to find the the halfway mark like the the side seams and then do a back seam I might just do it so that there's a closure for the skirt on one of the sides and then Bob's your uncle so I thought I'd quickly just pop this on and kind of show you what it looks like on my body so the bodice definitely needs to be boned 100% uh, and this is what the skirt looks like don't look at this side just don't look at that side look at this side look at this side um, the crinoline is very large and very short so it does you know potentially show off a lot of leg um, but there will be ruffles from here down by another good 10 centimeters so it should be okay um, but yeah it's definitely a case that the back needs to be longer but you know what I'm pretty happy with this um, definitely will be cutting the skirt longer and then cutting away at the front once I know what fabric I'm going to be using because that will make all the difference about how the pleats and how um, sorry the gathers will look at the front and then I'll play around with that and then I will make the final decision on whether I need to have the hoop taken in more I've got only one hoop in now I've taken out the top hoop um, and it seems to be holding quite nicely it is giving it more of a kind of crinoline shape rather than a disc <laughs> so yay um, but yeah overall I think I've got the proportions quite close to the reference image to being on my body so I'm very happy about that so yeah good times woohoo let's just say that mock-ups are done <laughs> Can we? And then I can start trying to find fabric and making this because yay! All right, cool, cool, cool. I'll come back to the skirt. I'll figure out the skirt later. G'day. So today I am going to do a little bit of work on red. It's my day off work, and yeah. I just need to have some time to myself. So I have done something to the mock-up, which is I have taken the hoop out and put the smaller hoop in. And I think I'm liking this shape more. It's a little bit more natural. I haven't tried it all on my body yet, but yeah, it, it's it's better. So the, the, the puff on the side is still sitting where it needs to sit. So, you know, it works, it's fine. Um, but yeah, so I'm liking that. I still need to play with it around with the skirt a little bit more and um, probably cut some off at the front and just see if that helps the draping at the front and also just the overall shape. So I'll probably do that today before I head out um, because I want to start looking at fabrics. I do have a few fabrics here. So let me just show you. So here we have this uh, red Gipioni. It's in two pieces. It was a top that I uh, bought from an op shop that was in their fancy dress and it was basically two squares of Gipioni silk uh, that had been sewn together with a terrible polyester uh, trim that had been sewn onto it. So I have repurposed this because it was four dollars and I had to have it. Uh, so I've unpicked it and that's going to be used for the bodice because I just I love it. Look it's just it's just gorgeous. And then in the mail yesterday came this piece of brocade so 
I've got the print out here and you can see in the bodice it has the uh, the brocade pieces on the front and the side and then in the bows for the arms um, and they're sort of the, the same color this actually printed out quite brown it's actually quite red it's like a deep red so mm, not happy with my printer but it gives you a bit of an idea so I'm playing around with this. This to me, like this is definitely a lighter shade of red than this, but I think that that will actually still work fine. So this is the first option. And then I've got a second option coming um, probably by the end of next month, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Um, and I like the pattern more on the other one, but from the photos, it looks like it's a brighter red than this one. So this one, it's, it's a little bit busy um, to what I was actually planning, but it will still work if the other one is just too much of a bright red. So yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, so it's just annoying that I can't like start construction as such on the bodice. I can probably start with the, the lining and that sort of thing, but I'll probably end up starting on the skirt on this. So yay. Anyway, that's what it is. And uh, so I need to still find fabric for the white. I'm probably going to go for a like cotton, a white cotton for all of the white pieces, just because it kind of gives me that vibe um, and it will just ruffle really, really nicely. Um, for the skirt, I'm still playing around. Like I need a deep red. I need something that is brighter than this red uh, for the skirt, but not you know not red red it's yeah so i don't have anything currently that will work in that uh, and i also need to get the the uh, cape fabric now at the moment i am very tempted to actually make this out of like some sort of wool like some sort of fabric that you would actually use for like a coat um but it's hard to find a deep red that may not cost me an arm and leg. I'm gonna have a look today in Homecraft. I know that Super Cheap Fabrics has a red wool cashmere blend that I think would be really nice for this, but it is a red. Uh, so I would need to look at dyeing that and making that more of a deeper red, which is terrifying. You know, it's a, it's a wool cashmere. Mm. Uh, and then I'll worry about the gloves later. I've ordered the shoes. I have ordered the shoes um, just as like little flat reds. And, um, and I'll add some ribbons and figure out how I'm going to do that at a later date. But yeah, we're getting there. I also need to like find a basket and like this kind of fabric so that I can make it the basket because, you know, props. It is nearly done. I have just finished putting on the waistband and put the zipper in. So the zipper is actually in this weird location, which is um, because it's a, a three quarter circle skirt. So it's kind of like at my back left, but actually it works out really nicely because you can't really notice it. And especially, you know, when I'm like this, you can't really see a center seam line in the back, which I'm actually, <laughs> kind of digging <coughs> excuse me so uh the ruffles are all on as well um and it looks super dramatic i absolutely adore it um the suiting fabric is very lovely it doesn't have as much stretch as i thought it was it like when i first pulled out the fabric and i'm actually really really happy about that obviously uh and the lining actually is going very very well with the suiting fabric they look almost identical which is fabulous because it's actually a shade lighter and i was very concerned about it but yes so this is the skirt at the moment the last thing i need to do is do the gathers um so that it's got the scoop up the top and the front is a fair bit shorter and then what will happen is i'll try it all on again with the crinoline slash petticoat the skirt is done <laughs> All right, let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, yes. It has such good, like, movability and swish. Please ignore my dogs. Hey, 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 hey. Don't wreck the skirt now that it's just been done. Uh, excuse the mess and excuse the dogs. But yes, 
I'm very, very happy with how this has turned out. <laughs> so I'm going to next work on the bodice. Yay! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm so excited because I have the red silk from that $4 top that I bought from an op shop and, uh, and I've laid out the pieces and I've been able to miss the um the the sewing lines because it's kind of uh, damaged the fabric from where that awful awful organza was so um, i'm very happy about that which means that my top will be cut out without any kind of um issue i've double checked it all so now it's just time for me to cut this all out and yeah i'm just i'm really happy i'm using that four dollar silk top that I just could not leave in that store. Um, yeah, it just, it, it really, really makes me happy. <laughs> Ta-da, all the pieces. So the next step will be ironing on the interfacing onto all of the lining fabrics and then constructing that. And also from there, I will put in the boning channels and then I will construct the outer layer uh, and yeah, pop it all together and then figure out the bias binding and put that but you know one step at a time people one step at a time but look at the colors aren't they just mm, I love it I love it I love it I love it so this is what we have so far this is the outer layer and here is the lining layer with all of the interfacing in there as well I've pressed open the seams where they need to be pressed and the next part will be me putting boning into this before I connect the two and then put the binding around the top and the bottom. Uh, and yeah, and then we'll start on all the white pieces. So, but yeah, I, I do like the overall look. Let me just show you. So, I'm not sure. Don't think we're gonna get it all in, but let me just tilt the camera and you can see the effect. There you go. Doesn't it look cool? I'm already really happy with it. <laughs> We are working on red again today after just a whirlwind of stuff uh, like Crunchyroll and everything like that. So I've gone ahead and I have put boning into the uh, the lining layer which has all the interfacing on it as well. So that will be against my body. Doesn't it look so pretty? Uh, for boning I have just used synthetic whalebone uh, for the smaller channels which I have done out of uh, the bias binding, some bias binding that I had in my stash. Um, and the larger channels which I've got here which I've just done by folding over the seam uh, which will correspond to the panels that have like the brocade detailing on the front because I have to have a close incision to the seam so that I can uh, do the embroidery for like the detail pieces of the, the loops. Anyway, uh, I have used some uh, wide zip ties, so good old trick there. So yeah, they do exactly the same uh, kind of thing as what synthetic whale boning does. It's just a little bit cheaper and you know, it's good. It's good. Uh, I had them and I didn't have enough synthetic whale boating, so it all worked out in the end. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew up the shoulder seams on both the outer layer and the under layer, lining layer. Uh, and then what I'll do is I will lay them on top of each other, sew around the, all the, like, all the bits, <laughs> all the bits, uh, so that it's essentially one piece. Um, basically, like, big flat line and then from there what I'll need to do is cut out all of the gold bias binding and prep that and sew that on. I'll probably do some overlocking as well once I've got them, them sewed together just so that it looks well just so that the the silk and the brocade stops fraying as much because that's really important. Okay so what I have done is I've just finished putting on the bias binding around the top and the bottom it looks really really nice I'm very happy with how it turned out 
I'm really happy I'm using this gold shaunting. It, it doesn't match perfectly with the gold in the brocade, but it's very, very close. It's from the same family. And that way I'm able, with the other embroidery that I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be able to bring in the two tones together really nicely. So it just kind of makes it look a little bit more gold than kind of like beige, which unfortunately is what's happening without like the height and gold of the bias binding. At least that's what I think in my mind. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. My fingers really hurt because I should have used a thimble, but I did not. Uh, so yeah, just gonna do the zip tomorrow and then I will start on the bust ruffle. Once I've got that in, then I can do the sleeves and then the bodice is good to go. So yeah, exciting coming together you know then I've got a skirt and a bodice I'm not naked anymore Woohoo! hello this is where we're up to so I've just cut out the little backing piece for this here I've done all the bias binding doesn't look really cute and I've put in the zip so let me just turn her around so here's the back zip it's got the hook and eye at the top here and it's all finished on the inside as well which I'm really happy about just tried it on it fits good so yeah I'm excited to just do the boob ruffle and then I can go ahead and do the sleeves this is where I'm up to and this is my thought process I don't know if this is gonna work but I'm gonna give it a go so I've ruffled down the uh, like ruffle for the boob there um, and I've done a lot I've, I've done a rolled hem at the top but then what I've also done is I've done a gathering stitch at the top, two centimeters from the top and then just near the bottom as well. And the idea behind it is that the two centimeters lines up with the top edge of the backing fabric and the gather down the bottom is just to kind of hold its shape. And then I'll go through and probably do a whole lot of hand sewing to kind of almost like how you would do cartridge pleats up the top and then do a quick running stitch down the bottom just to hold it down there and then try and remove the um the ruffles but i don't know if that's going to work and i'm kind of i'm kind of thinking i might just keep the stitch in there for the ruffles because they are holding quite nicely but i'll still need to connect them at the back so that is what i'm going to do next um, i'm just going to go through and pin this all first then do a whole lot of hand stitching and then i will cut off the excess here and then overlock around the edge so yeah and once that's done then i can put it in and i can hand sew it into place so today we are moving on to the sleeves so i have done a little bit of prep work so i've got the little flounces of the bottom of the sleeves already done so they have been gathered up the top they've got the rolled edge i've done a french seam down there so that's all ready to go. I've also sewn together the inner sleeves, which are more the structure side of things. So these are just a plain straight sleeve. And now what I'm working on, I've done one sleeve, I've got to do the other one, uh, is the larger outside sleeve. So here's one. What I've done is I have gathered down the bottom to fit the bottom of the straight sleeve. And then I've also gathered the top so that it fits the top of the straight sleeve. And the reason why I'm doing this rather than doing the normal lazy lady, the lazy lady method, uh, with, which is my go-to for, for uh, ruffles and gathering and stuff like that, is just because I want it to look really nice. So I want to look at, make it look really even and really nice. And also because of the fact that I do need to stuff this. So once I put this in here with the ruffle hanging down, uh, I then need to connect up the top, but I'll need to leave a little section probably in the middle where I can stuff the sleeves full of chul uh, before I sew it up. And I think it's just going to look so much better if it is all gathered first. So that is what we're going to do to the second sleeve now. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea, this is what it looks like flat and sewn up. So that and then that so it's it's a sleeve that's about this wide laid flat it's the biggest most ridiculous sleeve i have ever created so yes just need to gather this now and then we can attack stuff it sew it up do all the good things and then put it into the bodice so hopefully i will get the sleeves into the bodice by the end of today i've had a bit of a slow start to be honest there we are one sleeve done Looks like a little Miss Muffet hat. <laughs> All right, let's make the second one. 
This is where we are up to. I haven't sewn in the sleeves just yet, but I have filled them up with the chul. So I just had some scrap chul that was around um, and I one was like a kind of squarish one and one, one was a really, really long piece of chul. There were slightly different uh, thicknesses. So what I did was I cut them both in half and then stuffed the sleeves. So they've got the same type of textures in them and they're really lovely and you know big and poofy i'm very excited um they're holding their shape really really nicely so the straight sleeve underneath is doing its job and the ruffles look really really cute and the outer side looks like the outside looks really full as well they're just they're so big like who they're so big they're like muscles so I'm going to get those sewn into the bodice and then the only thing left for the sleeves is the little bows that is made out of the same brocade as the bodice fabric. I don't know if I'm going to get to those to today, it's already getting quite late, um, but I do want to try and get these sleeves in so that, you know, I can <sighs> get it done. <laughs> Close up time. I am now working out where I'm going to be putting in the eyelets, um, which is purely decorative. Like they serve no purpose whatsoever, but we've got straight ones going across the front and then we've got diagonal ones going down on the side. So I've marked it out. The spacing is about the same, funnily enough, for the front and the side. And this is what I've got. So down the front, this is where the four will be, and I'll copy that onto the other side. And then for the side panels, I've got it like this. So the cords will run from like this one to that one, and then this one to that one. So even though this is like a shorter kind of distance, um, that's the look that we're going for because it's the t the higher end is the one closer to the front, and the lower end is at the the back. So that's where it is. It looks like there's a lot up here, which is just blank, but because the sleeve is over the top, it really is just going to rub on it. And there is only four. And I've looked at the reference image and the way I've determined where I'm putting that first eyelet is that it's just under the seam line of where the brocade is on here. So that is exactly how I've done it here. Here is the seam line. If I go right across here, you'll see that's just underneath that line there. So that is how I've worked that out. Hopefully I've done this right because once I make those holes, I can't take it back. So, all right, wish me luck. This is something I've never done before, so <laughs> I'm uncomfortable right now. Please ignore the insane amount of mess behind me. I need to actually just find time to clean this room it's just not happening but the bodice is now complete i've got the eyelets and the lacings in all decorative completely non-functional but isn't it like just ultra would you like some beer like this <laughs> like i just i love this this is just all together looking so insanely cute i mean I definitely feel connected to my German slash Dutch heritage at this point. <laughs> um, but yes, so next up will be the hip pillows, uh, which I will start cutting out slash drawing out because I don't want to uh, cut out one layer, the top layer, because of the fact that I need to do some hand embroidery. So I want to keep that on the um the fabric all together but i'll cut the underside and i'll probably cut the ruffles and prep all those but yes i got the bodice done which i'm very very happy about this um yeah it was it was a lot of fun making this one there are a few little fit issues but overall i'm really really happy with it and yeah, it's, it's very comfy. I've got a lot of movement considering uh, and the sleeves look just so ridiculously huge and I love it. I am here for it. So yes, anyway, I need to take this off and go to bed because it's quite late and I have to get up early to go to a market and sell there. So yes, beer! <laughs> So what I have here is a light box. I've got the pattern underneath, which Terry has digitized. It's really, really cool. And I've just gone ahead and I have drawn the pattern 
on with a heat erasable marker which you can't really see because obviously backlighting and this will be my guide for the embroidery um, I'm going to do it by hand because I think that's just going to look really really cool and yeah uh, I've got the I've not cut out the actual um, fabric just yet I've marked out where the cut line is so that way there's more room for the hoop to be put on so I can do the hand embroidery so yeah done one just need to do the other side and it's looking really cool so this is what I have so far on the first pillow hip pillow thing I've just finished doing the wolf's head I'm really really happy with that uh, and I've just got to do the other side now it does take a very long time but it's really what I envisioned it to be I wanted something that looked like it was handmade rather than machine embroidered so yeah it's just gonna take some time that's all like the rest of it is all prepped it's just like sitting up here so when it comes time to assembly it will go together quite quickly I think slash I hope <laughs> one down one to go and then the back of the cape which is a big version of this apparently all right let's rehoop this and get started on this one both embroidery panels are now done woohoo so you can see just how crumpled it gets when you're like working on a certain area <laughs> and uh, yeah so I need to cut these out and then give them a good iron to get rid of all the marks so you can see there are a few little orange marks in here which were my guide points that I need to iron out and all of the outside which is my cut line that's all um, dissolvable ink as well or rather heat dissolvable ink is that the right one it, it yeah it goes away when I when I iron it so I'm gonna cut these out and then I can start construction and hopefully I'll have the pillow pillows done by this evening uh, or this afternoon that's really exciting check her out she's got the hip pillows oh my gosh they look so good I'm so happy with how they turned out look like get like the full length <laughs> and here we go once again sorry about the mess but look it's so pretty it's got the uh, pillows the hip pillows and the embroidery it's looking real cute so things are coming together so next will be the cape and the hood and yeah I just I love this I love this so much it's so ridiculous and puffy and I adore it um, <laughs> not too heavy which is nice um, but it's definitely going to be a warm costume uh, very very warm because I plan on wearing tights with it as well and obviously with the cape and with the wig and the gloves pretty much the only part of my body that is going to be shown will be like from my wrists to like my upper arm and like from here to like here <laughs> so it's gonna be a very warm cosplay uh, but it feels very light fluffy it's a lot of fun to kind of play around with the shapes so yep make sure keep your hands away from the body and I've just realized that I will definitely need to wear a different bra than the one that I am wearing because it is poking out uh, just over here so yay okay cool let's uh let's make the cape I'm just loving how this is looking. It's so ridiculous and wonderful. It's not ridiculous in terms of the design. It's just like, it's so much puff and so much ruffle and it's everything that I could have ever asked for in a cosplay. And the fact like, honestly, I am loving this pretty much as much as I enjoyed making Mad Hatter and also Tutti Yoda. Though it's kind of, it's it's in that range of like, just how much fun I'm having making this. Because it's it's like, puffy and it's ruffles and it's just it's me and that makes me happy <laughs> g'day everyone so it's Kiralee here and I have decided that I'm gonna make this into a two-parter because of the fact that there is so much footage and there is so much detail and to be fair I did make this cosplay over the course of five months so there's a lot of footage to get through Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Please make sure you stick around and see the next video because that is going to be part two. Now, 
Before I go, I do want to give a massive shout out to my amazing patrons who have really, really stayed with me this entire course of making Red Riding Hood. And I especially want to give a massive shout out to my tender a month tier patrons who are Justine Ghosty, Rogue Threads, Fangirl X, Sam M, Monica, Lulu Rush Cosplay, and Sotaku. Thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you leave us a comment, give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next one where we'll finish up this cosplay. Bye.